quiet bays and backwaters of South Australia's Eyre Peninsula, a new breed of farmer has emerged from the sheep and wheat fields to take up oyster farming. Tony and Dave are brothers and have been at it now for two years. These are Pacific oysters, introduced from Japan, and they're now in great demand from restaurants across Australia. Until recently, an oyster was an oyster, until those that distribute the delicacies decided they needed to be sorted. Now, every farmer has to supply them in one of five sizes, club, bistro, plate, standard and large. People have been hand grading for 10 or 15 years sort of thing, so that's the ones that walk around like this all the time. <laughs> Their necks <laughs> gone on. Right, eh? Measuring each oyster yeah, is slow and bit. tedious, so the brothers desperately need a machine that will do the job for them. 700 kilometres away, on the edge of suburban Adelaide, live the Johansson family. In a workshop underneath their homemade home, Peter and his son Andrew spend most of their time working together on inventions. It might be in one of those little boxes. He actually thinks very much like myself. And, and I can do a design and run it by him, and he can do a design and run it by me, and the two designs will mesh. Yes. It's not possible. Peter will always be eccentric, so will Andrew, so will Erica. <laughs> I think he taught each one of them to solder before they went to kindergarten, so... <laughs> so they're very resourceful. I'll give you a call if I can organise... Peter was born and raised in Alice Springs, where his father's reputation as a bush innovator and inventor was legendary. His mulga-powered car was his most famous creation. But for Peter, fame and fortune have been elusive, so far. A few years ago, there was nothing out there that could really um, grade oysters. They had uh, converted potato grader worth about $160,000. And uh, it did all right, but it's not ideal. Um, so Pedro took it upon himself to start designing a machine which would be effectively a Volkswagen. It, I, it does the job, but it's cheap. The oysters go in one end, and they get separated out into a single file. So they tend to fall out of here one at a time. There's a tube running down here. They fall down the tube and break a couple of beams of a laser down here. The scanner scans the oyster as it runs past it. When it's finished going past, the computer says, this is how big the oyster is. When it's fallen to here, it rotates the motor up to 180 degrees. About 12 oysters a second will go through here and go to any one of the tubes. With no machine like it anywhere in the world, Andrew and Peter had to start from scratch. And have now been working on the giant gizmo for two years. With little money and expensive high-tech problems, they need a good friend who's a computer genius. I design the electronics and the um, software. I design the algorithms that figure out how to do things, how to take the image and convert it to a volume. I'm basically looking to get back into the job market after an accident, and if Peter's project takes off, I might actually start earning some money from it. I'm not actually able to go out and work in a normal job because I spend most of my days in bed. Um, so at the moment, it's a, it's a trade-off between consumption of painkillers and actually getting something done. He needs somebody like me to do one side of it for him, and we're both running on 
non-existent budget, so if Peter can make a go of this, then hopefully that will see me with a job from it. It's very stressful way of life, um, but I'd have to say that ultimately um, all your failures are simply the road to success. That's the first thing, is I'm going to have my kitchen finished. It's been 20 years almost in the making. Every time that there's the money, been the money for the kitchen to be done, Dad's needed a new computer. So or you could say something. that Mum's kitchen is sitting downstairs on Dad's desk. Just uh, gluing some old oyster shells together so we can run them through the machine to test them. To prefer to have live ones that we can eat afterwards, but it's not always an option. A few oyster farmers have already paid for a machine and are getting tired of waiting. So Peter's organised a demonstration at Streaky Bay, 700 kilometres away, tomorrow. So the pressure's on to get it running and out the door tonight. So, draw it down. We're running a bit behind schedule. The machine is going to work and we're going tonight, regardless. Sorry. What are you doing about the tyres and the trainer? We're not. Hello, yes, can you tell me how much it would cost to hire a trainer for a week? No, we're not. Mum suggests... We are not. Yeah. They're not bald, they've just got... They're low. OK, the rubber's low. Have we a spare? No, we have to get a spare. If we run into problems, we stop, we go back and pick up a rim from somewhere or we pick one up on the way. Yep, fair enough. Straight on back, straight back, straight back. You did right. Straighten it up a bit. It's done at a huge rush over the last few days. It's been phenomenal. I've written about 60 to 70% of all the programme in there and I've done it without having the time to sit and plan it, so it's all just in my head. And being old and senile and probably forgetting what I was doing, half of it's probably screwed up. <laughs> yeah. We go some Manzac bickies for the, for, the, for the trip. We'll make a couple of sandwiches, we'll be right. Manzac biscuits, biscuits are staying here. Bull. <laughs> not a hope, Erica. What's your leg? See ya. All right. One's not working. It's not too late yet. Finding the little bits of code which aren't working and changing, erasing, rewriting. All Killing them one at a time. <laughs> Killing the bugs one at a time. Well, if we leave at midnight, we should be there about nine in the morning. It's actually measuring beautifully now. Sorts them beautifully, does everything it's meant to do. What we've got to do now is just finish off a few of the frills, like... Um, letting them play with it and tune it to their own needs. But minor worry. Minor, minor. <laughs> so you've been here all night, eh? Yeah, not been to... Last saw my bed about 5 o'clock yesterday morning. Oh, yeah. Got to go home and have a shower. I'm all smelly. <laughs> Now something very different to that. I'm just going to continue the program and it should strobe... didn't. I'm expecting to get there later this afternoon, or late this afternoon. This is the frustrating part, is just getting organised to go. <laughs> we'll be there first thing in the morning. We've, we've... Five minutes away from leaving, the car's fully packed, the machine's a goer, and uh, we'll be out of here in about 15 minutes, I'd say. Everything's um, turned off down there? Yeah, we'll, be. Oh, we'll check that before. Okay, we you better get your stuff up here, Andrew. Yeah, I'll yeah. we'll get it in the car. Some socks then... on. It's been a long time in the coming, and I know that they're excited about it, and I'm excited for them. And hopefully, it'll be worth all the hard work. It's 6am in Streaky Bay. 
Andrew and Peter have driven all night to make their appointment with the investors. Even though they're a day late, the farmers have come from near and far for the big demonstration. So it's show and tell time for Peter and Andrew and the machine. Get your fingers out or I'll let it go. Back. No, no, Andrew, listen. Mind, mind his head. Good idea, we've got a block of wood over there. Got is tube number one, which at this stage is tube no, number one. Wrong, it's from no. the other side. Oh, well, tube one's over here now. All right, yes. tube one. Okay, the tube, tube one's set at tube 60. one. Okay, Get it set up and then we'll I've set it as a tube, yes, which is a small bag, which we've defaulted as a counter 60 at this stage. That is now ready to grade off a standard grade. And once you've gone through your learning algorithms, your, your, your teaching All of the machine. All those settings and those numbers, the, the actual grade size numbers. Okay, are the, I'm going to change the grade. Make it go. Make it go. <laughs> yeah, that's Make it go. Yeah. Oh, that's Righto. So it's ready. It's ready to roll. Can you turn on? We just want to make sure, Tom. Mate, I don't know how to switch a computer on. Sure how do you think I'm going to go here? Not... <laughs> we'll turn it up like that. It's too steep for the. Uh... Stop it. You'll have to lift that one up to get this one shallower. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, bricks, look at this. All right. Take the mat out. How does that look? Strong, sturdy. Can we speed it up? Are they all coming out the same hole? No, good. Yeah. Hang on. They're slightly smaller. 31 bistros, 15 plates, one standard, which is actually two together, which shouldn't have happened. OK, now what's the problem? Uh, the sizing's a bit out, that's all. Now, I need to change my algorithms. This is why we've got the learning algorithms. Enough plates. So these are plates, are they? Yeah. yeah. All right, good enough. Jammed. Hang on. I'm going to shut it off. The farmers are not impressed. After all this time and their money, the machine has failed to grade properly. So it's back to Adelaide and back to the workshop. We needed to have a field trial because we can't get a hold of tens of thousands of oysters in Adelaide. It was a very useful time for us too. It's just uh, showing where we were going right and where we were going wrong. Millions of oysters have gone through the prototype, whereas six months ago, only a few thousand at any one time, probably only a few hundred. This has given us a very high level of confidence in, in the, uh, the mechanics of it and in the electronics. It's going to be just nice to get it up and running so we can have a holiday, have a bit of a break. Poor old Pete, he's tired. Basically, um, we've run on the smell of an oily rag for... Uh, nearly two years now. Peter and Andrew have finally got the machine working properly and have made their first delivery. We're about to install our uh, third and fourth machines, both in Streaky Bay. Uh, we've got one that was sent over about two weeks ago and that's been running very nicely. Um, the next two machines are going to Streaky this week. Um, Installing those machines and getting them over there has been a priority for us, basically because the growers have been screaming, hey, this thing works, we want one now. It used to take us probably a day to do 30, 40 bags. Now, the other day, we've done it in 30 bags in an hour and a half to two hours, so it cuts out a lot of time. Peter's determination has paid off, and with a backlog of orders, They've gone on to a new phase, manufacture. Finally, the kitchen is starting to come together. I'm in the planning process, and I've been out looking and getting pamphlets, 
Um, really, it, there's such a lot to choose from. <laughs> it's, it's confusing. So I'm spending a lot of time deciding exactly what I want because I won't do this again for a while. It's a lot more fun now. It's a lot less pressure. Um, it should be build a machine, go out, set it up, enjoy the fishing and have a few beers down the pub, not uh, go out and spend two weeks going, pulling your hair out and going, what the heck's gone wrong now? Yeah, we had to do something, took a punt and it's sort of worked out. Happy. Happy as Larry. <laughs> <laughs> it's a huge achievement, but not quite a full-blown success. When we're all millionaires driving Lamborghinis, it'll be a success. Amen. Except I need a Lamborghini that you step up into. I can't get down to one anymore. 90% I'd say of all your home inventors will end up with a shed full of discarded junk. All the stuff that didn't work, and there'll be a lot more stuff that doesn't work for most people than does work. So if you're a backyard inventor, get a very big backyard, you'll need it. 